my mom, who is my mentor, my angel, my everything, um, a big part of the influence in my life, um, passed away from um, colon cancer. And I do think that the lack of awareness, the lack of early testing, you know, was probably or contributed to at least, you know, um, her passing away at that time. Um, and so, of course, you know, when we know better, we do better. Um, I think that has actually motivated me to be more active in, in that aspect, um, to also be more self-aware, um, to know my history and to know what to do about it. My father also um, passed, um, let's see, in 2017 uh, from colorectal uh, cancer. And same thing, he was screened after symptoms um, started to appear. Um, and at the time, you know, he was diagnosed with stage four and it was pretty far advanced. Um, and so he lived several years uh, with it, um, going through the treatment, but, um, you know, unfortunately he's with the Lord now, but, you know, just going through that experience with him um, certainly put this on the radar uh, for, for me and my family. It's a time to educate communities about risk factors symptoms, prevention strategies, and available resources for colorectal cancer patients and their families. Over the years, NEPA has organized events to highlight the importance of colorectal cancer awareness and encourage proactive measures for better health outcomes. I do think that our story is very important to get out there because we probably represent a huge part of the demographic that's out there, despite the fact that we've both been directly impacted by this, by the death of a parent, we actually, you know, approached it or reacted to it in two very different ways. I'll give an example. For me, I just became very active. I, you know, the, the minute my insurance covered screening, I went for screening and I followed up every five years. And sometimes if I felt like, okay, something is right, my, you know, GI uh, behavior was changing, I would actually come out of pocket and test myself just because I was very proactive. My husband was the opposite. He, you know, was just what I don't know. <laughs> and for a long time, he just didn't scream. He became more active. He thought, well, if I take care of myself and I exercise and I eat right and I do all of this thing that I know that our parents didn't do, maybe I can be preventive about it. And so if you look at that, we really represent two parts of the demographic out there, right? The people who are really proactive about prevention through testing and the people who are really proactive about prevention through, you know, self-care and wellness. Right. Uh, what led you to prioritize regular screening for colorectal cancer? My wife has been hounding me um, about it, much like, funny enough, my, my mother was hounding my father, um, interestingly enough. So uh, she was definitely hounding me. I think what got me over it was uh, NAPAC actually hosted an educational um, session, uh, I think in the fall of 2021. Extremely well done. Um, it was very educational. Um, and I left inspired that, hey, look, I need to get this done. Um, and that was in 20, fall of 2021. We had a lot more people around us that were getting affected, that were, you know, actually passing away from it, that were extended family members. And we just decided to do this as a couple this time. I, you know, I made my husband go with me to go do my annual test. And we were actually more concerned about me because the last time I had tested, you know, they saw polyps or whatever. And, you know, so we went in thinking, OK, let's just go in and test and let's have a baseline for you. Let's see whether I'm better. This time we're going together. And that was kind of what led us to testing together. Let's now let's go back to that question. So can you describe your screen process? That is where I want to hear the story. Um, so we we ended up moving. We had a big move cross country um, and so when we moved, we had to find a new doctor. Um, we had to actually get a GI consult. So it was a little bit of a process that we had to go through to get it scheduled. Long story short, it probably took us a year to get it scheduled just because, um, partly because of the process, but I'll say more so it was the lack of proactivity, you know? So with the move, like other things kind of went ahead uh, of that um, kid's school, we had a new home um new jobs new everything so i we i definitely put a number of things uh, ahead of that but um you know and so how we got to us going together 
Funny enough, when we finally got it scheduled, the doctor now canceled on us. The doctor oh. had a family emergency, and so he canceled on us. So we ended up rescheduling, and as they gave us options, they were like, well, hey, listen, we could do you guys on the same day. And I was like, you know what, let's do it. <laughs> you know, so um, we ended up getting it scheduled on the, the same day. Uh, my our, our family jokes that we did a couple's colonoscopy. Why? Why did you do the colonoscopy? Um, in the fall of 2021, NAPAT um, actually organized an awareness month, just like they're doing now. Um, and there was a lot of information that came out of there. It was so well done. It was so well thought out. And one of the things they talked about was the importance of getting a colonoscopy every, like you said, every 10 years. And if you're high risk and high risk is considered somebody that has um, uh, a history, a family history of colonoscopy, especially if it's like a, a parent or a sibling or something like that, then you're considered higher risk. It doesn't mean you have it, but you're considered higher risk. And if that's the case, then you want to get it more often and you want to particularly get a colonoscopy. So that gave us enough information to insist on our own method of screening to be a colonoscopy. Give us a little more about the prep that you did. I actually think that the prep is less awful now than it was, you know, a decade ago, you know, um, or so. Um, the prep was interesting. I did it on a different side of the house. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was less than um, uh, something that I wanted to do. Um, but we, this time, instead of prepping for all day before, which was what I was used to from a decade ago, five years ago, I, there, there's now something that you can take to like six hours before. I mean, no, sorry, 12 hours before. So the evening before, you can start that. What I'm used to is a day before, three days before you start or whatever. So this was actually a pleasant welcome for me. For my husband, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say uh, overall, it was a good experience. The The prep was challenging, for sure. So that that was not fun uh, at all. And, um, you know, like my wife mentioned, there are, there are options that will reduce the window of prep and, and clean out and so um we we took the the shortest we could we could get um which was um i think what the evening before the evening six before starting around yes. 6 p.m till you know the wee hours our test was at 8 a.m and it started prepping at 6 p.m yeah. the night before so e either way the the prep was very difficult um but like i said it was just a short period of time um, as part, you know, overall, it was, I would say, it was a, a good experience with the exception of that <laughs> one particular area there. Just for our viewers, you know, the prep is, you know, you need to have a prep and the prep, there are different types and to involve drinking some fluid and um, some may even add some tablets to that to help get you cleaned out so that the uh, endoscopist can see, you know, because if there's a lot of stool in the colon, they can see. Uh, so it's very important that that prep is done.